combinatorics is the study of possibilities. So, you know, if you have a given set, how many subsets might it have? Or if you have a given set, how can you arrange it in a line? So I want to talk about these questions, but I want to talk about them from a geometric point of view. Let's do an example. So let's say that I have a set of three elements, A, B, and C. Now I want to figure out what are the possible subsets. Usually the notation that we use is this one, but just to make it a little bit easier to read, I'm just going to write it like this. And so a subset is just choosing some of these and and not others, and so I might choose, for example, A, B, or C, or I might choose A and B, or I might choose B and C, or I might choose A and C. I could choose all of them, why not? Or I could choose none of them. Now, one point that I want to make is that we don't just, we don't just want to count, but that we do want to count. So if we were to just count how many subsets there are, then here's, a, here's an argument that we could do. I need to make three decisions. Am I going to put the element A in my subset? Yes or no? Am I going to put the element B in my subset? And am I going to put the element C in my subset? Yes or no? So I got three decisions. And if, for example, I say I don't want to put A in, and I do want to put B in, and I do want to put C in, then that is going to determine uniquely one of these. In this case, it's B and C. Right? This is kind of a different point of view. So if instead of trying to choose the whole subset, we just ask each element, OK, are you in or are you out? Are you in or are you out? Then each element has two, two options, right? So A has two options, B has two options, and C has two options. And so the number of possibilities is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. This is true in general that if I had a set of n elements, then each element decides yes or no, yes or no, and so I get 2 to the n possible subsets. So that's kind of the, the, the plain combinatorial point of view. But now what I want to do is talk a little bit about how we can model this geometrically and see if we can learn a little bit more, not just about the subsets, but you know, how do we make sure that we got them all, how are they related to each other, and so on. Before we go into this one, let's go into a smaller example where it's a little bit easier to draw. We're actually going to start with a set of one element. Actually, let's start with a set of zero elements. So we have one subset because we only have one option, which is to not do anything. And so this is going to be my subset right here. This dot is going to be very important. I know it doesn't look important, but you'll see it's important. So now let's move to one element, and let's call it A. So now the subsets are, well, we have two options. You either don't choose A or you do choose A. And so what I want to do now is that I want to represent them like this. This is where I don't choose A, and this is where I do choose A. Bear with me, I'm just going to draw a line between them. Okay. For the zero element case, so what I'm trying to do is draw a picture where every dot corresponds to every subset, and then we'll talk about the connections between them so that we know how they're related to each other. So let's do the next one where we have two elements. Let's say they're A and B. I'm actually kind of getting tired of listing these subsets in, on a line, and I want to convince you that actually these subsets don't want to be on a line. That's not, that's not really the shape that they want to make. They want to make a different shape. To try to convince you of that, let's start with the subsets that we had before. Okay. And one thing you'll notice is that these are still subsets of my set. Right? The empty set is still a subset of AB. A is a subset of AB. But now there's some new subsets, which I'm going to put right here. When I add a green line, that means that I take a subset and I add B to it. It was the green market, I add B to my set, and so I get AB. And now my red marker is still going to mean that I add A. So if I take B and I add A to it, I get AB. Really, I would argue that actually this is the shape that these subsets want to be in. Let's do the next one. Let's try to do this same thing that we did here, but now let's use different order. So if I have three elements, A, B, and C, I get the same picture that I have here, because each one of these is still a subset of A, B, C, and they're still connected in the same way. Red means add A, green means add B. You see what we're missing, right? We're so missing C. We're missing C. We need, we need to get C involved. C is not playing any role. And I think I need a new color to put C in there. So if I go like this, that's going to mean I add C. And of course, I can do that to each one of these. And I'm going to get these new sets. In this case, I get AC. In this case, I get BC. In this case, I get ABC. Let's follow the connections as before. So I use red to add A. I use red to add A. And then with my green marker, that means add B. You will be good? <laughs> you made a cube. And so this is the thing. The subsets, I mean, OK, here when we, when we did this, we, we listed them all, and we you know, it's a fine list, it's complete, but we totally missed an aspect that is very important, which is that actually these things don't want to be sitting in a line. They want to be sitting in a cube. We counted them by listing them and going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And usually when we think about counting, kind of in everyday life, we think of laying things in a row and going one, two, three, and so on. But if you look at this other method that we used, this is a very different kind of method 
where we actually were using the, the internal structure of these objects. And let's try to think, see why it's 2 times 2 times 2. Really what we're saying in this argument is that every time I add a new element to my set, the number of subsets doubles. And this is something that now becomes very clear visually, where I had one element, then I project it and the number doubles. Then I take these subsets and now they double to become four. And now these four, they double to become eight. And so now you see a pictorial representation of, of why these are doubling each time. And then not only have we counted them, but we really have understood what is the kind of universe of subsets and what, and what that looks like. The first time that I saw this, I thought it was so clever and so beautiful. And now when I think of the subsets, I just think of a cube, and that's what I'm used to. I've been doing it for, for many years, and this is the image in my head now. You know, we walk around the world, and then I see a table, and then I think, oh, it's a table. It took humanity many generations to figure out the, you know, the tables are made of molecules, and molecules are made of atoms. Depending on what atom it is, or what the material is made of, then, you know, maybe it's more flexible, less flexible, stronger, weaker. Okay, I'm going to give you 19 elements <laughs> in, a, in a set. Tell me how many combinations there are. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't sit there in your head and start creating this 19-dimensional object, though. You would, you, would come, you would use this. So, right, so if, if I wanted to know what the subsets of 19 are, I definitely wouldn't use this method of, of trying to list all of them because that would, you know, that would take me impossibly long. When I think I'm done, I'm not going to be sure if I'm done. So really, the way that I would do it is just, you know, here I have a method for understanding why the number of subsets of 19 elements is 2 times 2 times 2 19 times, and then it's 2 to the 19, and then I figure out what that is. I think more what I would say is that this geometric model is, is really a more detailed explanation for why this multiplicative formula holds. And since mathematicians started using this kind of technique mm -hmm. and way of thinking, have they made new discoveries or reached new understandings because they see it this way? That's a, that's a really great question, and maybe what I would answer to that is you know, let's, let's look at these pictures and, and let me follow exactly the question that you made earlier. So here's zero elements, here's one element, here's two elements, here's three elements. And, and this doesn't stop here. It's, it's clear that I could keep doing this for any number of elements. I think what we should be asking ourselves is what kind of realm am I walking into now? For example, you see this and you, and you immediately call it a cube. How many dimensions does a cube have? We're used to saying the cube is a three-dimensional object. If I look at the subsets of a two-element set, then they form a square and, and a square is a two-dimensional shape. If I look at the subsets of a one element set, it's a line segment and that's a one dimensional shape. We're not used to talking about zero dimensions, but, but a dot is a zero dimensional shape. And so here I'm going zero dimensions, one dimension, two dimension, three dimensions. And then this really shows me that the fourth dimension is gonna appear very naturally here. And I might be thinking about, that I'm scared about four dimensions. I might be thinking that, that uh, I don't know how this goes, but I can certainly just do the next step and I think we should and we should find out what a four-dimensional polytope looks like. No? Let's say that I have now the four-element set, and let's try to figure out what are the subsets here. So now what I'm going to do is the same procedure that, that we did before. I, I'm going to want to add these, and so I'm going to basically have to give this a new direction. This picture is going to now kind of move over here and include these also. And I think before I do that, we should go back and, see, and just look at what happened over here. Here we had the subsets of zero elements, so this was zero dimensional, and now to move from here to here, we basically had two copies of this, of this picture. One of them is here, one of them is here, and we connected it with an edge. So we added an, a new direction, okay? Now when we move in this direction, we basically are taking two copies of, uh, of this one. There's this copy and this copy, and now we are adding a new dimension. So this is a line, and now it becomes a two-dimensional square. Now here, I have a square, and I really want to think that this is three-dimensional in the sense that I'm taking a square and I'm protruding it into a third dimension. And so I'm really taking a two-dimensional picture and I'm taking a bottom square and a top square and connecting it to become a three-dimensional picture. And so that's the visualization that we want to think of here. I have now a three-dimensional thing and it's, and it's a cube. And this is the part that's going to be a little bit hard to imagine, but we are, want to move in, into fourth dimension by taking a three-dimensional cube here, a three-dimensional cube in some parallel universe and connect them with a line. So I don't know about this parallel universe, I don't know what that looks like, but I know how to draw another cube and make the connections, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're going to add a, a fourth dimension. We're going to add a new direction telling me to add the element D. Okay, it's going to look like this. And this is green. And this is red. Okay. That's a monster. So that's, that's it. So this picture right here is, uh, 
you know, for one is the illustration of the subsets of a four element set. And we can see that there's 16 of them. It also is maybe the first time that you've seen a four dimensional shape. This is a four dimensional figure. Now, of course, it's drawn on a piece of paper. So this is like the two dimensional shadow of a four dimensional object. But then you can see, for example, how, for example, in a three dimensional cube, you can see that there's a lot of squares, right? A three dimensional cube has six squares corresponding to the six times that you get shapes like this. If you look at this one carefully, we started by drawing one and two three-dimensional cubes, but if you look more carefully, you're going to find that there's many other cubes. For example, here's another one with these two squares. Here's another one with these two squares. And there really is a bunch of different cubes that are living together. And so then you start to see that there's a lot of inherent structure here where there's, the, you know, in this case, the four-dimensional shape, and then there's all these three-dimensional pieces and two-dimensional pieces which, which fit together into this, this nice shape. This is, this is exactly what geometric combinatorics is about. It's about kind of drawing the connections between geometry and it's often geometry of very high dimensions and noticing that there's actually a lot of discrete structure behind there. So for example, if you know about the regular solids and you know, there's like the three dimensional regular solids and then there's a few four dimensional, five dimensional and so on, they have a very rich combinatorial structure. And if you really want to understand those, you also have to get into what is the combinatorics behind it and what's the discrete structure. So yes, yeah, this beautiful dictionary that really teaches you a lot both about you know, these very old questions of how do you count the subsets of a set, something as basic as that, but then if you really just take that idea further, you end up finding just landing into four dimensional space and trying to figure out how, how to walk around that space. Yeah. You gonna draw a five dimensional one for us? No. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I would say I, I definitely would invite uh, the viewers with grid paper, which is what, you know, it's, it's tricky to do this without grid paper, but, but with grid paper, it's actually pretty simple to do. You, do. you take this shape and you draw it, you know, you take it, you shift it over and you make connections and that's the five dimensional shape. And if, if you really have a lot of time in your hands, you could draw your 19 dimensional shape by just taking it and protruding it, protruding it to five, to six, to seven and so on. We have got something very interesting. Have we? Yes, look at this. We have 